Hi guys, it's me, Chancellor HD, and welcome to this race review for the 2021 Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort in Holland. A Grand Prix that, I mean, we didn't think it was going to be that good uh, because we knew the limits in terms of how tight the track is and the lack of straights. We knew there were limits to the amount of overtaking opportunity that there was. But the race, I have to say, um, without the crowd being there and being so uh, vibrant and that, this race really is one of the worst races we've had in, I think, quite a while. Nothing really happened. Um, I know at the end of the race, we had racing between Alonso and Perez and Sainz and Ocon, but we didn't really get to see that. So, you know, I couldn't really feel excited at the time. But really, um, yeah, the race... This wasn't a good race um, for me. Um, there were a couple little flash points, but nothing really spectacular. And I think the battle for victory, which we'll get into in a moment, of course, I think it could have been better and we could have had a real fight, but it just never materialized. So, yeah, it just didn't really feel like that great of a race today. Uh, but, you know, we'll still, of course, review the Grand Prix and all the events of it and why certain people finished in certain positions, of course. And first off, we'll get into the official race results of the 2021 uh, Dutch Grand Prix here at Zandvoort. And here they are. So Max Verstappen winning at <coughs> sorry, his home Grand Prix. Here in Holland, Lewis Hamilton finishing in second. Lewis Hamilton does get the fastest lap point, but of course, he still has lost the lead of the World Championship to Max Verstappen. Valtteri Bottas finishes third, and then Gasly fourth, Leclerc fifth, Alonso brilliantly finishing in P6, and then Sainz in seventh, Perez eighth, Ocon ninth, and Norris in tenth. Of course, Sergio Perez won the driver of the day vote, and then Ricardo 11th, Stroll 12th, Vettel 13th, Giovinazzi 14th, Kibitza 15th, and then Latifi, Russell, Schumacher, uh, Schumacher sorry, completing the rest of the order, with Yuki Tsunoda and Nikita Mazepin retiring from the race. Now let's get into the teams, and we'll start off with Mercedes, who, I mean, they did say, coming into the Grand Prix, that they were going to split their strategy, and they were going to try really any which way to get ahead of Max Verstappen, and that's what they did, but it wasn't the way we expected it to be. We thought that it would probably be Valtteri Bottas if he was close enough um, doing the undercut with Lewis Hamilton going longer into the Grand Prix, which is, of course, what Valtteri Bottas did instead. Now, I think it's possible that the original plan was for Hamilton to go longer into the Grand Prix than Max Verstappen, which I think would have probably been more beneficial than what they tried but because Valtteri Bottas was just simply too slow in the Grand Prix today they had to do what they did which is pit Lewis Hamilton for all the pit stops before Max Verstappen to try and do an undercut and get past Max that way because Valtteri Bottas by the time we got to the first pit stops, Valtteri Bottas was pretty much out of play for an undercut, and the only real way he could have any effect on the battle for victory is if they kept him out to try and hold up Max Verstappen, which, of course, is what they tried to do. And it worked for, what, a lap, maybe two laps at most, and allowed Lewis Hamilton to close the gap a bit, but it didn't really help enough for Lewis Hamilton to really um, have a chance of passing Max Verstappen on circuit. And then after that, we got to the second round of pit stops. Lewis Hamilton, uh, for the second round of pit stops, was actually closer on the entry to the pits. His gap to Verstappen was actually closer than it was, I believe, um, at the first round of pit, uh, pit stops. Sorry. <clears throat> I think at the first round of pit stops, it was something like four seconds, the gap between uh, Max and Lewis, when at the second round of pit stops, I'm pretty sure it was two and a half, three seconds. So when Hamilton came into the pits, 
given that Lewis gained a couple seconds on the outlap on the first stop, you really would expect that Lewis Hamilton, after as well a better pit stop, because remember his first pit stop was probably a second too slow um, on the stop there, you'd expect with the second stop that given how close he was to Verstappen, that Verstappen might be in a bit of trouble. But Mercedes, they got the stop right, but they didn't get it right in terms of when they pitted him because they put him out in traffic and that lap... That outlap where he had traffic, I think, maybe didn't cost him the win. But if he had any chance, legitimate chance of winning the race, that was the lap that was going to do it for him. If he had a clear lap. Even if he was, you know, say two and a half, three seconds behind those load of cars. And it was Stroll, Russell, Ricardo, I believe. That would have been enough of a gap for Lewis Hamilton to go quick enough on the outlap to put Max Verstappen under pressure, but he couldn't because of the traffic and the dirty air and all of that. So that was the moment for Mercedes, and they just got it wrong and really should have waited uh, maybe a lap or two later, of course, in hindsight. I know they obviously wanted to get ahead of Verstappen as soon as possible, but they needed really to um, judge that situation better, and normally they do, but just in this instance, they did not. And ultimately, Max Verstappen won the Grand Prix. And like I said, at that key moment, Mercedes did not get it right, which is rare for them, and allowed Verstappen to easily win in Holland. Valtteri Bottas finishing in third. I mean, uh, what? Mercedes have still scored more points than Red Bull at this race. So not necessarily a bad result. Uh, they extend further by, what, four points or something? Or five points, I think. Uh, the lead in the Constructors' Championship. But, yeah, it, it could have been better. And I don't think they really maximised their performance today um, when it came to the pit stop phases, like I said. The yeah, Mercedes, I think, going into the Italian Grand Prix, definitely won't be favourites. I think, given how Verstappen has looked since the summer break, I'd say Max Verstappen is probably favourite going into that Grand Prix. And I think Mercedes might be on the back foot a bit, uh, especially in qualifying. I think it's going to take something, you know, big, a big performance from the team or, you know, Lewis Hamilton himself to get vital points and take them away from Max Verstappen. Now, talking of Red Bull, Max Verstappen, great drive by Red Bull. Like I said, coming into the race, all they had to do really was get the key moments right, and they did. The start, the pit stops, the uh, outlaps, inlaps, all of that. Got it all right and won the race. Brilliant drive from Max Verstappen. He's my driver of the day because he was so consistent, so quick, and I thought was just absolutely brilliant. And really, <clears throat> this weekend, I thought, has been really, really great. So, well done to him. And a very, very well-deserved victory. Who knows what would have happened if Lewis Hamilton did not have traffic on his outlap from his second pit stop. Maybe we would have seen Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton wheel-to-wheel. -wheel because it did, I think, cost Lewis Hamilton quite a bit of time. But I think even if Lewis Hamilton had got past, Verstappen still would have been very close on his tail. Because I think Verstappen was, legitimately today, the quicker out of the two. But yeah, great drive for Max Verstappen. For Sergio Perez, finishing in 8th place. A good drive in the end, but I think without that flat spot that he uh, got when trying to pass Mazepin into Turn 1 early in the race, if he didn't have that, I think his race could have been even better. Because, of course, he had one extra pit stop than really he would have wanted to. So I think it could have been better for Sergio Perez and probably could have ended up finishing... Maybe in sixth place in this Grand Prix, which I think would have been probably a good result for the Mexican. But eighth is still okay. Um, hopefully, in Monza, doesn't have a poor qualifying. We know he doesn't have normally that great a qualifying uh, record um, all the time, say, around the Monza circuit. His race record is absolutely brilliant, as we have seen. His qualifying record isn't necessarily great, but... I think definitely at Monza, I think Sergio Perez for sure 
will be a lot stronger. Not just because the Red Bull car, I think, will go very well at Monza, but also Sergio Perez does tend to be consistently one of the strongest drivers around that circuit. But yeah, Red Bull, <clears throat> great day for them. Great weekend. And you'd have to say, after Silverstone and Hungary, those two races where they scored, what, I think just two points as a team, um, but those two races, or three points as a team, after those two races, they've bounced back so brilliantly. They really, really have. I know Spa wasn't really a Grand Prix at all, but still outscoring Mercedes and, you know, doing great in qualifying with Max Verstappen. And then here at Holland as well, brilliant performance by the team and by Max Verstappen. And if they can, you know, do what they did this weekend at Monza, get pole and win, then you've got to say that Max Verstappen, I wouldn't say is the clear favourite to win the championship, but the form will definitely be with him going into the final few races of 2021. Now let's get into the midfield. First off, McLaren. We'll start with Daniel Ricciardo first. So he got past Giovinazzi, I think, at the start. Um, and his pace was okay to begin with. It did drop off a bit. And then once we got to the first pit stops, he was still looking pretty all right. But after that first pit stop, his pace was just terrible was nowhere near as quick as the Alpines when he wasn't that far behind uh, the Alpines in the first stint. But like I said, in the second stint of the race, Daniel Ricciardo just dropped off the face of a cliff and was, you know, miles behind that pack. Um, and then even, you know, Lando Norris came through to beat him, even though Norris pitted a lot later and Ricciardo, you know, pitted quite a bit earlier. So you would have expected Ricciardo to gain quite a bit of time back on Norris, but he, he didn't. Norris almost jumped him in the uh, overcut that he did on some drivers. So, yeah, uh, Ricardo very, very poor in the second half of the race, I have to say. And really, though, McLaren quite poor this weekend. Only 10th and 13th in qualifying in this race. And we saw Lando Norris, even though he pitted a lot later and had fresher tyres, he still wasn't that quick and couldn't really use it to pass... Ocon, Perez, Sainz or Alonso when if this was a different track maybe I think McLaren would have easily passed those drivers because I just don't think this circuit really suits this car. I think this is probably the first circuit we found this season where McLaren legitimately have had a big drop off in pace. Even though other tracks where McLaren have say been not as strong They've still been pretty strong, but this is the first, you know, track of the season where McLaren have just been legitimately quite slow. And only one point being scored is simply not good enough, considering Ferrari, who we'll go on to now, scored 16 points and very close to being 18 points. So, like I said, for McLaren, not really acceptable. But for Ferrari, uh, we'll start with Charles Leclerc, the man on screen. Leclerc. Not great drive, I'd say good drive. I think Ferrari didn't really have the pace I was expecting today. And they didn't really trouble Pierre Gasly that much in the race. I mean, they closed the gap to a second before the first pit stop. And then Leclerc, of course, ran longer into the Grand Prix, uh, pitted onto the hard tyre when Gasly was on the medium and was on fresher tyres and started to close the gap and, you know, and then it got down to, I think, four and a half seconds. And then you would have expected, just slowly but surely, Leclerc to keep closing, keep closing, keep closing. And then he never did. And Ferrari just dropped off pace-wise. And I think Ferrari, even though 16 points is still good, considering how quick their car is, I think it could have been better. I think Charles Leclerc definitely could have got fourth today. If, firstly, they were closer to Gasly after the first few laps, and if they didn't suffer that drop-off in pace, and it wasn't just Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz also just had, I'm going to guess, just some sort of tyre drop-off, where the performance of the tyre just wasn't there anymore for Ferrari. So, 
you know, shame for them. Like I said, 16 points is still good. Carlos Sainz was passed by Fernando Alonso on the last lap, I believe. I still haven't seen it, so I have no idea what actually happened there. But disappointing for Sainz that he was so slow, I have to say. He was half a minute behind Charles Leclerc at the end of the race. That is a lot of time to be giving up around a one minute, what, 13 per lap. So, yeah, that is quite alarming why Carlos Sainz was so slow. And I'm sure there'll be investigations into that. But it seemed as though t today there was a bit of a glimpse of the issues Ferrari suffered in France. Where if you remember in France, they just their tyres dropped off and their pace then just dropped off a cliff. It seemed a bit similar to that, but just not as bad. And uh, of course, that'll be a bit of a worry going into the Italian Grand Prix in a week's time. Um... I don't really expect Ferrari to be that good at Monza because it's a power track. It's the most powerful of power tracks. And I don't think Ferrari still really have the power to compete with McLaren uh, and Alfa Tauri and I'd say probably Aston Martin as well. So, yeah, I'd be surprised if Ferrari get a strong result. I think they could probably nick a point or two, but I don't think a properly strong you know, what they've had this weekend, 5th, 6th or 7th, I don't think that's possible at all next weekend. Now onto the rest of the midfield. Aston Martin, uh, yeah, they were terrible. Uh, Lance Stroll was stuck behind Russell for the entire race until Russell pitted on the final lap and, of course, finished Russell down in 17th place. Uh, for Sebastian Vettel, terrible day, terrible weekend. Spun trying to pass, I think, Antonio Giovinazzi on the inside of Turn 3. Another embarrassing spin for him. Yeah, just terrible day for Aston Martin. And I can't really say I'm surprised. 12th and 13th is really pace-wise where they looked to be all weekend. And they just never, at any point in this race, and really any point this weekend, looked like a top 10 runner. So, like I said, it's not really a big surprise for Alpha Tauri we'll start with Pierre Gasly great drive by him 12 very important points even though Alpine um have scored 10 points so the you know the gain Alpha Tauri have made is not that big it is still a gain at the end of the day and it might prove to be a very big gain in that battle for fifth in the constructors as I think the gap is now down to uh, six points for, for the uh, fifth place in the Constructors' Championship between Alpine and Alfa Tauri. So, yeah, great drive by Gasly. Really, he got the job done in qualifying as to why he finished in fourth today. His start, he almost lost position to Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari, but Leclerc just simply couldn't get back underneath Gasly um, on the inside of Turn 1 to punish Gasly for his lockup on the inside front into turn one and then after that Gasly really was comfortable um and never really had any issues when he had a bit of say not trouble but possible trouble coming his way with Fernando Alonso ahead of him possibly holding him up easily dispatched him and yet yeah, just drove great and thoroughly deserves the fourth place and I, I, I will say with Gasly I'm very happy that he got this result because Plenty of times this season, he's qualified in the top six on the grid to the point where he's pretty much in qualifying trim, one of the top, you know, few drivers, but he's not really been able to maintain it on a race day, whether it be his own mistake or the car having a problem or the car not being quick enough, whatever it may be. It's been hard for him to maintain, but thankfully today, from his point of view and AlphaTauri's point of view, it is a fourth place finish. And of course, Yuki Tsunoda retired from the race. And uh, yeah, Tsunoda was not heading really for anything. So it's not really that big of a deal. For Alpine, very, very good result. Limiting the slight damage to their lead in fifth in the Constructors with 10 very important points. Fernando Alonso, I've got to say, drive... Um... <sighs> One of the drives of the day, I was going to say drive of the day then, but then I remembered that I've already said Max Verstappen, but he was great today. He really, really was. Didn't start the race that great. I mean, he did in terms of gaining positions, but his pace wasn't that good in the first few laps. And Esteban Ocon was all over the back of him. And then thankfully, from his point of view, 
got up to speed, pulled away from Ocon, and then settled into a rhythm, and then capitalised wonderfully on Carlos Sainz's tyre issues later in the Grand Prix. So yeah, great drive for Fernando. With Ocon, though, weird race, very weird race, because at the start, it looked as though, you know, in those first opening laps, it looked as though Ocon was miles quicker than Alonso, and that Alonso you know, would be beaten by Ocon for sure in the race, but then Ocon just massively dropped off his pace and was really nowhere compared to Fernando. And then at the end, because he was a second Alpine in line, ended up getting dispatched by Sergio Perez. So at the end, with Ocon, uh, a result that's decent but it definitely could have been better i think definitely could have been better and i just think if he had had better pace and had stuck closer to fernando alonso through that first stint probably could have finished in eighth maybe even seventh place but it wasn't to be but still like i said 10 points that's a very good points haul for them and they are still just about fifth in the constructors Alfa Romeo, they have just simply uh, no luck at all. Giovinazzi pitted, um, I think, because he had a problem with his tyre. Um, I don't know that for sure yet. I haven't heard anything on that. But I do know that Giovinazzi and other drivers have had problems with cuts on their tyres from the gravel this weekend. So I'm going to guess that was probably an issue with Antonio Giovinazzi there. But it's a shame for him because... Qualifying was great, and his pace was actually pretty decent in the race, but 14th it is. And Kubica, I've got to say, very good drive in 15th place. Very good drive. And I think if we never see him again in Formula 1 as a, you know, driver in a weekend, that this is an indication that, yeah, he has lost pace because of his lack of mobility, but he is still pretty quick. Because he wasn't that bad, to be honest, considering where Alfa Romeo normally finish. So, yeah, I thought Kubica did pretty well, considering he was thrown in at the last minute. Yeah, Alfa Romeo, disappointing race and heading for a very, of course, disappointing season. And then finally, Williams. Of course, Russell was in a great position up in P11 for so long. Then he got a five-second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane, and that ended then any real hope of a points finish, and then he pitted at the end. Um, I don't actually know why he pitted. I don't know if it's because he also had a cut on his tyre or some kind of issue, but Russell pitted at the very end of the race, and to be honest, even without the penalty, he wasn't going to finish in the points. It was just never going to happen, but I think Williams had a good weekend still. Um, if they had just not had those accidents in qualifying, it could have been even better, the result in qualifying, and maybe... Could have allowed them to nick a point from this Grand Prix. Uh, and if they'd had that track position, that might have been good enough then, like I said, for them to finish um, in the points. But yeah, still an okay week. Uh, sorry, weekend for Williams. And of course, uh, Haas F1 finished at the very back. Mazepin retiring. Uh, Mazepin almost forcing Mick Schumacher into the wall again. I have no more words on Nikita Mazepin. Um, just absolutely terrible driver, I have to say. But before we go, let me now get into the standings in the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships. Now, I don't have, unfortunately, a graphic to show the Constructors' Championship standings, but I do um, have one for the Drivers' Championships. So let me get that up right now. Max Verstappen is leading going into the Italian Grand Prix by three points. Lewis Hamilton, of course, in second. Valtteri Bottas third. Norris now drops down to fourth. Perez fifth. And then Charles Leclerc closing the gap there in sixth. Carlos Sainz is in seventh. Gasly eighth. Ricardo ninth. And tenth is Fernando Alonso now in the Alpine. And then... Just to update you guys, in the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes are 12 points clear of Red Bull in the Constructors. Red Bull second, of course. Ferrari are now back into third in the Constructors' Championship and are 11.5 uh, points clear of McLaren. 
who are fourth. Alpine are fifth. Six points clear of AlphaTauri sixth. Aston Martin are seventh. And Al Aston Martin, by the way, they are 37 points behind Alpine. And honestly, unless they start getting some big results, I think Aston Martin are very close to being out of the uh, the race to finish in fifth in the constructors. Williams eighth, of course, on 20 points. Alfa Romeo ninth on three. And then Haas tenth on zero but guys that is it for the race review here uh, i will be uploading tomorrow a, a race watch along best bits video uh sometime in the afternoon um i might schedule it i might not i don't know i might just upload it to the channel and let you guys uh, feast your eyes upon the best bits even though of course the race wasn't that exciting and then of course i'll be live next friday for practice one and the pre-sprint qualifying qualifying won't be live next Saturday because it's spring qualifying and you guys already know my opinion on that. And then, of course, live next Sunday for the usual content. Race preview, race watch along and race review probably will be recorded from now on because it's just easier for me to do that. Plus, I don't think you guys are going to miss anything um, different, you know, from the race review there. So, yeah, that's the schedule for next week. And hopefully you guys will join me all for that. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell for more content like this. As well, smash a like button and share this video and channel every way you can. And don't forget to join my Discord server link, uh, Discord server down below. The link is down below, is what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, great place you know, to interact with other people when it comes to F1 and motorsport debate. And also, great place when it comes to notifications of my content. Make sure to join that server. But guys, until uh, tomorrow's race, watch along best bits from Holland. And until Friday for the Italian Grand Prix weekend, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.